You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another fun episode of Ask Drone You. Thanks for being here. Thanks for putting your trust and your time in Drone You, because obviously we're here to help you. That's really the only reason we've been here for so long without advertising on the show. So thank you. Thank you for all the support from our members. Uh, don't forget, if you are looking to up your skills, so that way your competition can't even come close to what you're doing, then you've got to become a Drone You member. I'd also recommend for all of our new members, don't forget to check out that operations course, the Solar inspection course and as always the mapping course and rob we just started another university style uh mapping class last night and uh, got started off on another great foot very happy yeah it sounds like you got a good crew of students that are raring to go and definitely committed and they're they're in for a treat I, you know what, it's a class I really enjoy teaching and uh, appreciate everyone out there who keeps sending us students. Appreciate you, On Good, who's, uh, who's doing a lot over at Brink Drones now. Used to be a part of Pix4D and, and frankly, uh, he's been sending us a lot of students. So I think it's really cool uh, to see uh, someone uh, who is so innately involved at Pix4D and he's just like, look, the, you have got to go to Drone U for your mapping training. So thank you, sir. Really appreciate that. Absolutely. It was good to chat with you last night as always. Um, but let's get uh, let's get right into today's question, which is brought to you by, uh, that's right, we've got in-person training coming up. If you're ready to go have some fun, you're also ready to up your skills and learn some habits and routines to make your flying a lot better. So that way you can get jobs that you maybe dreamed of or maybe you just want to be a better pilot overall to increase your chances of success. Join us for flight mastery or operations. You can also join us for a, uh, a mapping flight mastery and operations class as well. Just go to the droneu.com and check out events. Hey, Paul and Rob, Tom again. Hey, can you guys address the uh, new requirements when you go register a drone? I've been seeing a lot of posts of people uh, seeing the remote ID um, notification on that when they go to uh, register a new drone these days. And since that is not something that is available at the moment or required at the moment, it looks like some people are struggling getting their drones registered. If you can, I'd love to hear what you guys think of this and what the best solution is. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. I love um, Tom is actually doing public service for all of the litner, listeners when he sends his questions in, which I think is really cool. So thank you, Tom, um, for thinking about everybody else and taking the time to send that question in because I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that are confused about why they're running into this when they try to register a drone at this point. Well, I think it's easy to be confused, Rob. I think it's yeah. absolutely easy to be confused because let's just put this in super macro terms before we go down the rabbit hole. But the FAA has said there will be remote ID mm -hmm. in 2023. Okay. CNBC last, what was it? Two weeks ago said you can fly over people now uh, because of remote ID. So that was wrong. But then the FAA doubled down or someone made, I think, a grave mistake. And they have now when you go to register a drone, is it remote ID capable? But the question in itself is erroneous as a question because the FAA has not released the protocol for remote ID. And now if you remember, I had written an article about like what drones do we think will be remote ID? Mm -hmm. And to give everyone the gist of it, I pretty much said two things. Number one, when remote ID is around, the drones you fly now, you're probably not going to have those same drones. Also, you know, I kind of pulled the amortization schedule of how long our drones last. And I don't think uh, any of the drones that we're really flying now are, are going to be around uh, when remote ID comes through. That said, DJI did built in a remote ID kind of system to all of their drones pretty much since 2017. And so I wrote in the article that we believe with a firmware upgrade yeah. that these drones could meet 
the FAA's protocol rules. But it gets back to the point that there still is no protocol. So when you go to register a drone and they're asking you, is it remote ID capable? They haven't provided anyone what remote ID actually is. And are the and are the answers to the question simply yes or no? Or Correct. is there a, I don't know. There's a, no, 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 it's yes or no. <laughs> okay, so. So when you do go to register your drone, what should you actually do? When it asks if your drone is remote ID capable, just say no. Just say no, doesn't change the registration. So how to register your drone, FAA drone zone dot FAA dot gov. It costs you $5. Don't go pay some third party to go register your drone. Uh, you are the, if you do do that, either uh, ignorance is bliss or uh, impetuousness is rampant. Don't do that. Save your money, five bucks, FAA. And when they ask you, is your drone remote ID capable? Click no. And then maybe email the FAA and say, why is this question on registration right now? Uh, it's con I think it's confusing more people. And at a time when we're really trying to educate the public, the message has got to be clear from the top. So I think that this is something that uh, maybe they should just take off of registration, frankly. Or maybe we need to have someone from the FAA come on and, and kind of discuss why is this a part of registration? Because they had even reached out to me and said, hey, could you correct your article to make it more clear? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think that that is a question is... I mean, I trust that there are people in whatever rooms they're in having conversations and saying, we should do this and here's why. And then everybody agrees. Mm -hmm. Right. So giving the benefit of the doubt, it would be really nice to know what those reasons are. Yeah. Because otherwise it's just confusing. No, I, I, I couldn't, couldn't agree more, actually. Yeah. Uh, I really have no idea why this is on registration. And so. we can sit here and speculate. I mean, I don't know, maybe how long does a registration last? I think it's two years. Okay, so maybe they're thinking, well, by the time, well, even then, two years from now, I don't think it's quite ready, right, for remote ID. So my only thought was that maybe they figure drones that are being registered now will be flying when remote ID does come into effect. I could see but that. But that's speculation. It really is. Let me check this This uh, when it, everything expires. Uh, three years. Registration lasts three years. Excuse me, not two. So in that case, then that that premise holds, uh, whether or not that is the reason or one of the reasons, we still don't know. But the bottom line is when you're going to register, do what you said. It's kind of like a, uh, it's kind of like a trademark infringement, right? At the end of the day, what is a trademark infringement? Anything that confuses a potential client or customer about said brand, right? And so hmm. if you think about that, the reason that's such a big deal is because convenience is a key part of any sales funnel, any or any sale period, whether product or service, easier you make it, the more you sell. It's that simple. So when we make it inconvenient and confuse people on registration, my question to the FAA is, are we hurting the propensity of hobby recreational pilots? Are we confusing the public at large and making the situation worse? I think that is just the simple baseline of the question. And I'm not, I'm not sure I have the answer for that question. Well, I don't, I don't know what what worse looks like when you say worse, what is the worse that manifests? Meaning they decide to just not register their drone. Cause I could see that as counterproductive, well, right? If they get to that point and they say, I don't know, screw it. Uh, That's a problem. That is a problem. I have heard of this happening. I'm sure I, it does. I don't know the extent to which it's happening, but I know it's happening. Of course. Yeah. Uh, that said, uh, in all honesty, uh, I, th I don't know. I mean, could it, what does worse look like, right? You're looking you're like, what is, uh, what is measurable? And, um, at some point in time, I think we're going to find out what DJI sales really are, mm -hmm. uh, comparative to the number of drones registered. Exactly. That, uh, those are the, that's the data. Yeah. And I think that that data already shows a stark contrast compared to what's, uh, said in the market versus what's real. Um, and that said, uh, it would be interesting to see the deviation in percentages of that exactly. number from last year to the end of last year to the end of this year. Yeah, totally. Would I mean, that be I, a good calculation? I mean, you are the algorithm master. Oh, you, that is so not true. <laughs> <laughs> but I can add two plus two. So uh, I can divide a number by a number to get a percentage. <laughs> So I think those are, those would be very telling numbers. Yes. Am I the only person that sometimes does like 18 over 100 equals X over 42? Like I do that all the time at restaurants. So. Oh, 
anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway. We could get into math strategies yeah, if yeah, you'd yeah. like on calculating dips if you want. No, because I, no. will, I will forever showcase how unintelligent I am. <laughs> oh, stop. Oh, stop. Uh, but that said, uh, it would be a very interesting data point to, uh, to, to get. So Tom, uh, so Tom has kind of evolved in his position. He's, you know, now on the flight crew. He's got his roof inspection class out, which by the way, if you like Tom's questions, uh, do him a favor. Check out the roof inspection course on DroneU. But if you remember, Tom was doing a lot of FOIA requests uh, for us a long time ago. And this would be a great data point, a very interesting data point. Um, yeah. You know, so. Well, I would I would hope that it's something that the FAA is evaluating on an ongoing basis, like a, a rolling average basis, right? I don't know to what. Uh, I would say with a large degree of confidence, I do not think that that is going on. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah. I mean, you look at these know. congressional meetings right now where the FAA is being interviewed, where various uh, companies in the industry are being interviewed. And it makes me wonder, would it be important for Congress to know, hey, how many drones have actually been sold in the United States? How many of those drones are registered? Okay. How many drones have had actual problems in the airspace? Though I think that would be a very, very telling. Uh, you would get numerous data points out of that and interpretations out of it. But I think that one, you would find just how incredibly safe drones are. Yeah. And I think that the number of drones sold and flown versus what's registered, I think would astonish Congress. Yeah. And I think that it would showcase a an important data point uh, as far as the effectiveness in the strategy of regulating these toys. So yeah, yeah. And to be clear, the vast majority of them, I don't know the percentage, but I would guess it's greater than 80%. That's totally a guess are registerable, meaning they're, they're big enough, yeah. greater than 0.55, right? Oh, that would be another data point too, is how many drones sub 250 grams have been sold. Cause you don't really register those. So right. unless you're, you know, uh, a commercial pilot Using and, for, and yeah. read the, the super fine print of part 48. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, <laughs> so one guy, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I could, I could think of his name, but I'm going to refrain. So anyway, uh, 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 but, uh, it's also kind of like, you know, if you, uh, there, the, the same person is all about, you know, don't change any of the parameters of your drone. You'll void the warranty. Well, we found out you won't void the warranty. So anyway, it's a, it's just, it's, I suppose it's a risk, but we all take calculated risks every day. That's how I look at stuff like that. It, yeah, it is. But also the Supreme Court did say that if you purchase something from a company, you ultimately own it and they cannot take features away from it. So there's But that. they could take their warranty away from it. If in their warranty, it says if you change something, then we void the warranty. They which, have the right to do which that. Which makes sense, right? I mean, if yeah. you uh, you lift your truck, uh, the powertrain is definitely not going to last as long. That's a, that's a good example, right? But when you are removing something like, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, landing mode check, like on a Mini 2, that, that's not going to void the warranty. You know what I mean? That doesn't, it doesn't change the safety aspect of the aircraft at all. So anyway, we're on a diatribe. That was comes, a rabbit trail. When it comes to registering your drone, recreational or commercial, do know a couple of recap reminder basics. If you're traveling internationally, it's probably a good idea to register your aircraft um, as a traditional aircraft. If not, then you're going to use FAA dronezone.faa.gov to register it as a commercial aircraft. Uh, remember, drones below 250 grams, if you are a recreational pilot, do not have to be registered. Oh, anyway, and if you are registering a drone, just remember to say no, it's not remote ID capable because we don't know what the protocol is yet. Yeah. We would love to know, though. We would love to know, which really brings up a question of uh, how some – now I'm like, how do people get patents for something that isn't defined yet? I'm confused. Anyway, on that bombshell, that's going to do it for me. So <laughs> my name is Paul. <laughs> and I'm Rob. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>